Hi everybody, John Townsend here, and welcome to the Dr. Townsend Live program. And if you if you've been here a while, like we got this great community, welcome back, community. And if you're new, welcome, and I hope it's a good experience for you. What we do in this hour from two to three Pacific every Wednesday, when I'm around, um, is we answer questions about life. For example, relationship stuff. Um, uh, emotional issues, spiritual issues, parenting issues, sometimes grandparenting issues, sometimes your own parents' uh, issues, uh, dating, marriage, uh, business, leadership, strategy, kind of the whole, you know, challenges of life um, uh, genre. And um, uh, what we try to do that we think is um, helpful and unique is to give people a real answer and um, an answer that's better than just, hey, stop doing that was dumb, don't do that. That's sort of like, I mean, you know, and Jesus said, you know, good tree produces good fruit, bad tree produces bad fruit. So if you, got, if you got a bad fruit, like a bad relationship or some pain or some frustration, just to say, stop that fruit, that's kind of not working. Jesus said, there's a root there, right? But it, you got to find out what roots are. And then also, but while we do that, we'd try to give you a deeper answer that's got the solution. We also want to give you something practical. So you're not lost in the fog of, you know, this week, I just, I just think this week you ought to be Sally. You just be. You know, well, how do I eat breakfast and be? So, you know, we want to get something like the thing that you can do. That's kind of what we do. We hope it's helpful and we love our community. And um, our producer, Stacy, kind of makes it all happen. Hi, Stacy. Hello, everybody. Thanks, John. Welcome to the Dr. Li Dr. Townsend Live show today. We're so glad you guys are with us. I see some of you are already in the waiting room. So we'll go ahead and start getting some of you connected with John so you can ask your question. If you're listening to us live today and you're calling in on the show, when you are connected with John, we want you to give us your first name only and tell us where you're calling us from. We like to know where our participants are coming from. And also go ahead and turn your uh, video feature off for privacy purposes. We just want to keep it um, the same across the board. So we just want first name and then we'll be able to hear your voice, but no one will see you. So we are so glad you're here and we'll get going with the show today. And last week we had almost everybody, uh, we, we heard their voice. Some, and every now and then we'll have programs where people, ah, I don't want to talk to them. I'll just type in my question and we'll answer that. I mean, obviously the, the immediacy of the person I'm talking to, that, has, that gets in the front row because then I really can hear them. They can hear me and there's the emotional tones and understanding the deeper things. But if there's no way to do it and you're sitting at your, you know, in your, in your office and you don't want to talk to me because the boss is walking by, you can text it and we'll talk to you. Anyway, so I hope it's a great show. hope we helped a lot of people and Stacey looks like we got somebody on board. Absolutely. Caller, you are live with Dr. Townsend. Go ahead with your first name and where you're calling us from. Is that us? That's you. Okay, we have two people with two questions if you have time, but um, well, I am the... It depends. Oh, or we can call... It, it, we usually only go one at a time. So here's, let's do this. That's Depending fine. Question. Um, if they're too kind of, I can knock them out pretty quick. It would, but if, it gets, if they're complex problems, I'm sorry, I'd have to just go one because the line gets kind of long and it's kind of not fair for everybody. Else. So that, that's, that's fine. My, my phone just doesn't work on speakerphone. So we call together. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so your name and where you are first. Um, Anne, and I am in Iowa. And your buddy? Hello. I'm Jane. I'm also in Iowa. Oh, hi, Ann and Jane from Iowa. Okay, great. So who's going to flip the coin and say who's got the first question? Okay, she told me to go first. So my question is, how do you Are know? You, I, don't, I can't tell you your question. I didn't know if Ann won the toss or if Jane did. Who am I talking to now? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ann. Okay, Ann, let's go. How do you know when it's a good, I don't know what the word is, appropriate time? To do marriage counseling and what it might be good and more productive to have more individual work first. Is, do you ever, if you ever think there's a time where marriage counseling isn't always productive because there's so much individual things in the way? No, it's a, it's a great question. A lot of people are really confused about it. And so let me just kind of give you the scoop on it. Um, okay. If the primary problem 
is somebody's got a really bad issue that affects the marriage. Now, I'm, I'm, you might want to see this in, in a recording later because Stacy records these because I'm going to give you a lot of steps in this. And I don't want you to write too fast or feel OCD, but there's some steps. Okay. involved. So scenario number one, somebody's got a really bad problem. They're really depressed or uh, they have awful anxiety or PTSD or something. And but they hate it. They know that they, they know they're dealing with it and they're, you know, and, and they know it affects the, the marriage because anytime a, a, a serious or significant emotional behavioral problem um, is in a marriage, one person's got, it's going to affect the other person, but they're still a good person. They're not in denial. They're not blaming. They're not gaslighting. They're just saying, I really am messed up and I hate it that I love you and my dysfunction is involving you. Then you go individual first. Now, you might say individual plus marital, which you can, but the dominant thing is somebody who's not in denial. They love you and they know they got a bad problem. Send them individual first. And, and if, the, if it's working, then you find out, oh, that he's more loving or she is more loving and responsible, whatever, and you're okay. So that's scenario number one. So far, so good? Yeah. Scenario number two, they've got a really bad problem, like I just said, depression, anxiety, angers uh, uh drugs or whatever they and they're in total denial or minimal denial and it's well it's because of you i mean the reason i look at porn is because you know you're not as attractive as they are it's your fault and okay guess what they you don't send that person individual because they'll just start to try to schmooze the therapist you say we're going to go in together because that person is not owning their 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 toxicity and their sin against you and the marital therapist gets to say uh jim it sounds like you just blame your porn addiction on Sally's not wearing the right dresses. That's not okay. And you got, and, and then the, the, the therapist can say, you see us together because I know you got problems, but I'm also seeing you, doctor. Sam, Jim, I got too many names here. Jim, I'm going to send you to doctor uh, uh, rolling down the, the hall because you need that. So if it's a bad problem that affects the marriage and they're in denial, got to go Meryl because there's nobody validating that you're really in kind of in trouble. All right. Um, if you both have communication problems, we don't really, and you, you love each other, but sort of like, there's no like addict or, or total narcissist in denial. You don't have that kind of thing, but you're not connecting. You don't feel close to each other. Communication is not good. You're an extrovert. He's an introvert, or you're more spontaneous and he's too rigid, or he's got low energy. You got high energy. That's marital, that's from marital therapy. That's, that's the way to think about it. So whatever your situation is, that would be the protocol, okay? Okay. Now, um, I, now let's, you know, that wasn't too long and we got calls lining up. So Jane, is yours, is your, are you up? Yep, yep. I don't think it'll be too long either. Go for it, because uh, I, I like the way these, th these things are structured. I think it was very helpful to our community. So I'm glad, glad you got these questions. What's yours, Jane? All right. So I listened to the boundaries book. It's, you know, changed my world. And I started working on shifting the dynamic with my sister. Um, and as I've been going through that and being very honest about when my boundaries are violated and when I don't feel taken into consideration and, you know, stepping back as a result. Um, and it's, it's gotten to this point where she's emailing me and she said, I need you to give me a list of every time you felt violated in every way that what you don't want to talk about, what you don't want me to see. Um, and, and I felt really frustrated because I'm like, I, I've already talked about this and talked about this again and talked about this again. And I feel like her asking me for this list feels almost like another violation or like putting the onus back on me when really I just don't want to have this conversation over again. <laughs> Um, and, and I'm not sure whether my like feeling about like that is an unfair or unreasonable request is valid. Well, um, and you know, I'm not, Jane, is your, is your original core, core, core conflict with your sister have anything to do with control and loss of relationship or something? Uh, it, it feels like I give 90 and receive 10. So back, even when you guys are little girl sisters, you were more the giver and she was more the taker. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you where I am on this. I can see why you'd feel frustrated, like, oh, my gosh, why didn't she listen or whatever? Um, and it, probably because it goes back to here. Jane goes again. 
giving. And I've got to spend, you know, this amount of time writing this stuff down, thinking about it, and it dredges up old pain. And once again, I'm giving more than my sister's giving. But let me give you the other side of that. I would do it in a heartbeat. And I'll tell you why. Because sometimes when a person gets boundaries and they get more honest about what's going on, the person who's either a boundary buster or they don't know about boundaries, they don't believe in boundaries, they think they can just do whatever the hell they want. They kind of get paranoid, like, oh, did I tie my shoe the wrong way? Did I, you know, is my eye looking weird? And it, she might be saying legitimately, I kind of want to know this so I can own it. I think it's kind of a cool thing that somebody says, I mean, when's the last time somebody said to you, tell me every time I've hurt your feelings? I mean, we'd all love that day. That's like Christmas. So put the time in, give her the benefit of the doubt, and just say, I hope this helps. And I don't want to be like obsessively you know, checking you. I don't want you to feel condemned at all. Thank So that was, a, you did me a favor. I think it's more a childhood thing. Go ahead and do it, Jane. All right. Thank you. you bet. Hey, nice to talk to Iowa. You guys have great questions. Call back anytime. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Stacy. that was refreshing. I mean, two people that want to have great lives and do the right thing and Hey, and they worked it out. They were resourceful. One can't get in on their device. And they, were resourceful. Yeah, they, were that, they, were, they were resilient in the COVID, COVID age. I loved it. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so your, your next caller is with you. Um, and I believe her name is Mary. Mary, you are live with Dr. Townsend. Go ahead and tell him where you're from. Mary, are you with us? Yes. Hi, Mary. Hi, Dr. Townsend. How are you? Thank you so much for letting me talk to you with you. Thank you. Where, where are you in this world that we live in? Where I'm in Ohio. I'm in Ohio. So um, I'm calling. Um, I have called and talked to you before on the uh, New Life show, but I'm calling about my daughter. Um, she's 43. Um, she's been sober two years now. She lives in another country. And um, when I go, I, when I go visit her, um, I still, um, I, I feel like she still nitpicks at me, <clears throat> trying not to cry. Um, I feel scolded and I feel like she nitpicks and I'm just um, wondering, um, you know, what to do in that, in that situation. And, there, and I, I know I'm a codependent and, I, and I've gone to, I, I'm in recovery myself. I've gone to CODA for three years and I'm, I'm working the steps and I'm, I finished, I just finished step five. Um, but when I went to, to visit her, she just had a baby. Um, just the whole time, I just felt like she was nitpicking at everything I did. And um, so I don't know if I had a lack of boundaries or just I needed to say something to her. I just kind of like gave her space and, and maybe I just uh, allowed it, I don't know, so. Now she wants to kind of, she wanted to kind of talk about her resentments and uh, she doesn't want to talk to me on the phone. And I told her, I said, I'm going to do a step four on, you know, what we've been through. And, um, and so, and I said, I don't want to do it over text message, All right. you know. Hey, Mary, um, first off, I'm really sorry for how this wounds you. And there's just so much pain there. It's not good when somebody you love that you maybe you weren't the perfect parent but when you want to have a relationship and support somebody and the nitpicking can feel like it feels like somebody's just you know stabbing you and i'm very very right. sorry for this. thank you um especially codependence you're identified codependent because the whole thing about the codependent is giving you too much and you think after all i've done and this is something you're certain right. it's worse all right i think we need to role play a conversation Okay. Strengthening and empowering and skills in this. So we've got to figure it out. She's in another country. You tell me. It can be either phone, and I know what she wants and what she doesn't want. I got we've got to kind of do the compromise. Okay. Next, it's either it's either when you're in country with her or on phone or Zoom, and you pick the most likely scenario. It can't be text and it can't be email, not this kind of level of severity. Right. So um uh, you mean you want me to role play, like give you a situation? No, I want you to be her. I want you to channel your. Oh, partner. okay. All right. You got to tell me if this, I, so I got to get my head right for this and get. Okay. 
So you got to tell me, okay, we'll be in, in the living room together at my daughter's house or no, it's going to be Zoom or it's going to be a phone. Kind of give me the... Okay, like I, I was at her house for six weeks. So... Um, I know, wait you know, a minute. I'm saying you're going to do this with her after... Okay. You, I, I, okay. Between now and a year from now, I want you to do this. So set out right now okay. what that context to be so we can really get into it and solve it. Okay. You want me to like role play like I'm her right now? Not, not until you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I want okay. to, but I want I want to know: Are y'all are you planning if you want to if you want to fix this relationship so it's got yes. better structure? Yes. Do you do it in person with her, or do you want to do it on phone or Zoom? No, it'll have to be. She lives in Greece, and we were just there uh, for six weeks. So, yeah. Okay. So we'd have to do like a FaceTime. All right. But can now, tolerate, can you tolerate that? I mean, without like getting hurt too much and wounded too much. Because if you say, no, if I just do it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just fall apart. I'm going to tell you, then you can't do it for six months. Get healthy and come back and call me later. You got to tell me if you can do this. Well, I don't know. We tried to like clear the air while I was there. And um, we didn't. No, 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 other... I'm going to fix that. Oh, well, who knows? Okay. I mean, I'm, just, okay. I'm just saying, how do you feel about um, anticipating a relationship or a conversation where you set some standards for how you can be treated. Do you think you can pull off? I'm going to train you on that. I'm asking you, do you think emotionally you can pull that off? Where you say, no, if I even think about it, I'm panicking. I'll say, let's don't even do it. You tell me, could you do this? I would like to do it. I'm afraid that I, I may panic, you know. Okay. And All right, but you're not going to panic on the on this, on our on you and me, call because no. I'm a nice person, you're a nice person, so you're not going to. Right. Okay. Right. Let's do it. I want to get give you an idea of how you can come by feeling okay. Is that all right? Okay. Yes. Um, now, when you have these kind of conversations, there's got to be sort of an agenda. So, what do I let me give me give me a fake name for your daughter? Um, uh, Ruth. All right, you're going to be Ruth, and Ruth's doing her blamey thing. So, okay. I would like. I don't think that these kind of conversations work well in the moment, in the heat of the moment. Like right. you're hanging out and you're watching TV, and then she starts picking at you, and you say, "Hey, right. let's talk," because everybody's like upset right. and escalate the amygdala goes, gets hijacked so this is actually a call about you you have an issue and so i would i would want you to tell your daughter i know we've got some friction and stuff and then I, I got some things that i want to talk to you about and are you okay with that so your daughter's coming in on the facetime knowing you okay will, you're you know that mom wants to talk to you about something and okay um, and i'll be mom and i'll talk to her and you do all the blamey stuff that she does and I'll okay. see if I can help you stay centered. Does that make any sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so we're on FaceTime and uh, she's on and I'm on and you're Ruth and I'm, and I'm you. Okay. Hey, Ruth. hey, hey, mom, how you doing? You know, I really felt so hurt. You know, you guys, you just, you know, you, you, you just left, you went on your cruise to Alaska and you just left us. And, and I just, you know, I needed more time with you guys and you guys just, just left and didn't care about, you know, care about that I was alone with baby for, you know, baby was three weeks old and you just left us. I know, and I could tell that it wasn't good for you. I'm, I'm so sorry, honey. Um, and I do want to process that with you, it's a big deal. But actually I have, a, the reason I asked for this meeting for this particular FaceTime, as I told you, was that I had need to have to bring up something. So can we do a deal, sweetheart, where like next week we FaceTime about how you believe I abandoned you. We can deal with your issue next time and we can deal with my issue this time. Does that sound fair to you? Well, I just don't really have time now because, um, you know, I just really don't have time. You know, the baker is really busy and I just, we're all busy this month and I've got the newborn and the boys and I just really don't have time for any of this. Gotcha. And your baby time is overwhelming. I mean, tell me about it, right? So um, it, should I call you, uh, like today is July 27th. Should we just make another uh call for August 27th, uh, a month from now, sweetheart? Well, I don't know. It's kind of getting kind of far away from all of it. You know, it just seems oh, like time is passing. I just didn't want to intrude on your busyness. So next week, uh, this time? Well, okay. Maybe if I can find some time. I don't know. I'm pretty busy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And maybe don't work for me because we've all got our schedules. So, okay. We, one Next week is too soon and one month is too far away so that gives us month two or a week two or week three which one will work what about better for you sweetheart well i guess i guess in a month i guess or maybe next week i just and you know now you guys just don't seem to be supporting me 
in, you know, in anything that I'm doing. You're just not, you're not there for me. Right. And we're going to talk about that after I have my talk with you. Absolutely. I want to hear all of that after I have my talk. Absolutely. So are you committing to three weeks from now or a month? I just need it because we got calendars. I think we can talk next week. We can talk next week. Oh, next week. Okay. All right. So you are committing to two o'clock Pacific time, FaceTime, just like we're doing now next week. I just want to make sure we're committed. You're committed and I'm committed? Yes. Great. All right. Thank you. Well, let me just kind of, I hope this won't take too long, sweetheart. Um, first off, I love you and I'm so glad you're my daughter and you're a wonderful person and, and I just always thought so much of you. I feel like God gave me a gift in you. And, um, thanks for being my daughter. Um, and, and secondly, Ruth, if, if, if anything I'm doing that alienates you or bothers you in some way, I, I do want to know about it. And that's why I really want to hear this next meeting with you feeling abandoned by me. I want to dig into that. So here's my issue. And this is kind of adult to adults, not even, it's, I think it's more like adult to adult. We're both grownups, we're both moms. It's not really parent to child anymore because we're right. parents to that. Um, Ruth, I feel like you pick at me a lot and are really critical and it's hard for me and I want to have a solution to stopping that. Well, just, you know, let me know every time, I, anytime I do it, just let me know. You know, and you just, you seem to be just, you know, real, real sensitive. And I just got to like tiptoe around you. Mm, maybe so. Um, okay. So, all right. Time out. You have never told her this. You've never told her, stop that. That hurts my feelings, Mary. We're out of it right now. You, she has no clue that. No, she knows. Okay. Got it. Back in. Okay. okay. Well, you know, I am sensitive and I'm always working on having a thicker skin, but some of this stuff doesn't feel like I'm too sensitive. It just feels like I'm never good enough and there's always bad things about me. So, I, hey, I love, that's, I think that's one solution, sweetheart. The next time that I feel like you're being uber picky, um, I'll just say, okay, that was an ouch. And if I say, you know, the, I don't know, something about my driving or something about my voice or something about how I pick up your, or your daughter and you, you start picking at me and I say, that was an owie, I like Owie better. And that was an Owie. What will you do with that, Ruth? I want to make sure we understand each other. Well, well, hopefully, you know, I've got, I'm under a lot of stress and, you know, I just have a lot of stress and stuff. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to listen. You'll try to listen. So what you're saying is if I say, Ooh, that was an Owie, you'll go, I know, but I'm under stress. I can't hear this. You think you might right. do that? Right. Yeah. I just can't be tiptoeing around you all the time. Oh, I don't no. want you to tiptoe. No, I hate that. I never want you to. We can, we can talk about that. I, I want to be a, a resilient person, but I don't like little little passive aggressive stab wounds. Like that time you told me, you know, four times that that holding the baby was wrong and that my voice is weird and then my driving sucks. I mean, little things like that. I can take a few, but I just can't take a whole lot. So I'm not going to like be on guard to tell you 30 times a day, stop that unless you do it a lot. I, I want to have a great relationship, but there are times when it's an hour. So I'm kind of concerned, Ruth, that your answer is, well, here's what I wanted you to say was, well, yeah, I'll stop it. I'll stop bugging you about your, your voice or stop bugging you about your driving or stop bugging you about your, what, what you're wearing. And what you said was, I don't know if I can stop because I'm a person under stress. That's, that scares me a little bit about being open with you, sweetheart. Well, that's just how I am. Okay, well, what you're telling me then is even, mom, even if you say that hurt me, that's an alley, I may not stop because I'm a person under stress. So mom, I may keep going at you. Is that what you're telling me, sweetheart? I'm, I may I'm try, I may try, but yeah, I mean, I can't guarantee Got it. Okay. perfection. Then we need, no, we don't perfection. Neither one of us do. <laughs> um, then this, here's what we ought to do. Let's have, let's have part two. If I say that hurt me and, and, and I would desire that you go, I'm stopped. Hey, let's, let's, uh, Let's take a walk and look at some roses or play with the baby. And if you can't stop picking on me and you just say, look, I'm in stress. I'm just going to keep picking on you. Then I'll probably do something like leave the room, take a walk, take a drive, mm -hmm. go out to a restaurant or something until you think you can control yourself more because we're both grown ups. How's that sound? Okay. Yeah. Whatever you need to do. Yeah, you if think you can't control your, your, if you can't control your criticism of me, mm -hmm. you're so under stress, you must control me. Then I'll take control of me, take a walk, come back a couple hours later and see if you can be nice to me. Yeah. That's a good plan, right? 
Okay, well, let's give it a try. Okay, see you next week. Love you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, parents. All right, here's, here's what I want to know. What one skill, we did a bunch of things because she's a little. Mm, she's, she's a vacillator. She's, she's, a, definitely yeah, she's a vacillator. So right. what one skill did you just pick up that helps to empower you when you do this? One thing. I yeah, think. I think, you know, what, one thing is to say, and I think I've heard you say this, like, it's, it's not okay for you to talk to me that way. Or, you know, or, that, or maybe that, you know, that did hurt. Yeah, you ouch. know, that, that was my hour. Yeah, ouch, that hurt what you said. Ouch, you know, kind of like, that was hurtful. You know, um, and I and I have said to her before when she was actively drinking, um, I have said to her before, if you continue to, uh, you know, hound me, I am going to uh, stop cooking and I'm going to go. I'm going to leave the house for a little bit. Did did she? And she did. Did she, she stopped line or did you did you did you have to do that consequence or did she stop before you had to do the consequence? She did stop. OK, that moment she did All stop. Right. Here's here's one. I got to go in a second, but I want to, I'm going to give you a little challenge. Yeah. Remember part two. Part two is maybe daughter says, I'm so stressed and I'm just pissed off at you and I'm going to keep coming at you. Part two is you actually do. You got, thank God you didn't have to do it last time when she was drinking. Right. You might have to take that walk. And because some people, they will listen when you say that hurts me. That's a sensitive person. That's the person you want to be. I want to be when somebody's right. owie. I want to be, you were vulnerable, stop. Some people need a verbal warning, like, I don't want you to do that. That's part right. two. But there's a certain population that says, I don't care if you're vulnerable. I don't care if you warn me verbally. I, I need consequences. And that's when you've got to go to the act. So you're, you're okay. ready to go, Mary. You're not going to fall apart. You're a strong person. Have a great conversation with Ruth. Thank you, Dr. Townsend. Bye-bye. Oh, I just loved that conversation. Because we're so many of us have that thing where you, know, you got somebody who like is kind of gamey sometimes and makes excuses for behavior and you got to get them to a commitment. And if they won't commit, you're, what you're saying is, oh, I can't control them. They can't commit. They're, a, they're sort of a live wire. They're a grenade red go off. How do I take care of me? I can't control them, but I can control where I'm going to be. So mm -hmm. great, great call. Okay, okay. Stacey, who's up? Okay. Let's see here. Next caller, you are live on the Dr. Townsend Live Show with Dr. Townsend. Go ahead and tell us your name and where you're calling us from. Sure, hold on a second. I have to mute the... Howdy. Are you there? I'm there. Who, what's your name and where are you? Oh, my name... Uh, let's call me Navar. Navar? How do I spell Navar? Have you got another device on? Because sometimes if you got like a phone and a computer on, they talk bad to each other. Is are all your devices off the bar except for what we're doing? Well, I'm using the phone to dial in, uh -huh. but I'm watching the meeting on Facebook. Oh, I think okay, so yeah. going to call a foul on that. Which one should I turn off? Stacy, what do you think? Yeah, just so we can have the best technical experience, if you will, um, Lavar, go ahead and close out your Facebook. You can always come back and watch it because these stay live on um, all of his media channels every week. But if you'll close that out, then the phone call with Dr. Townsend will go a lot better. Well, the phone call is great. I, okay. I do like the face to face. Yeah, Should I have opened it in Zoom. I um, Zoom? You could, but we, you know, we still don't do the face to face for you, for you. We make, uh, for privacy purpose, we have callers turn off their video. So, um, because we really oh, just want God. it to be a, a call in show, but you can go back and watch the live portion of John it's talking to you if you are, or you can mute it. If you it's mute it, that will be even better. If uh, you can no, mute, mute your Facebook. It, but... No worries. Go ahead with your question. You know, um, <laughs> I have so many. I think I'll have to call in again next week. But uh, you know, I'm I'm following Townsend's guide on. Uh, it's the title of it is uh, how to find a date worth keeping. That's uh, Henry Cloud. He wrote a great book. That's Henry's book. What that? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Please excuse me, Doctor Townsend. Oh no, it's a um, great. But, I uh, refer people to it all the time. Well, no, and you know, I mean, I've been studying your, you know, boundaries books since you guys started them, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe longer. But now, 
currently, you know, I'm going through a process of, you know, exploring with candidates through uh, dating websites and hmm. um, in in this book, you know, it uh, it explains some processes that I that are new. And one of the questions I have is, um, you know, as you go through these dating experiences, uh, you know, you it. I, I think it helps to put all the issues on the table up front, you know, within the first couple of days to get to know if, you know, if, this, if there's compatibility in, in some very critical areas, you know, um, of course, the spiritual and, uh, you know, morals, values, but also. LaVar, uh, LaVar, I need a when question. It comes to, I get the background. Give you me need a question. question. Okay. So my question would be, you know, is is it appropriate to discuss physical intimacy at those stages like sexuality well you're you're not meaning yeah sexuality and what your what what the parties prefer or care about or want in their expectations it doesn't mean you carry on and do them it means putting it on the table to see if there's compatibility you with mean stuff like how far you would parts. go sexually, or do you mean just, I like affection or I like, uh, uh, I like reading together. I mean, I don't want to get too graphic, but I, when you say your pre preferences, are you talking about, I'll go only this far for values reasons, or is it more like, I like holding, I like, I don't know, scratching each other's back. I don't no, know. it's no, the, the values are given. I mean, you're not going to want to go there with anyone you so, know, you, so, right. you you share you share that you know the, here i i value abstinence at, at, for okay, a, so up to a Christian certain point complete. but but then when I it but putting on the table is here's the here's you know here's the uh methods uh, that i prefer when and if we reach a point where we're physically intimate and the purpose of putting oh, that on if the we get to see, that you know point, are we compatible know that ahead of time right. oh absolutely okay. i Hey, LeVar, here's what I, I want to say. I get you. No, I get you. Um, I think it's too soon. Good to know. And here's why I say that. When? Go ahead. The reason I say that is that um, you can blow somebody out of the water if you go to something that's sort of um, private and kind of vulnerable like that. That comes down the line as you start to feel like, okay, the values are in place, the chemistry is good, I like the personalities, I like the interest, I like the friends, then you go to that. But a lot of times a person will say, look, I just don't wanna waste the time. There's a lot of time and money dating, there's a lot of brain damage. So let's find out if we get married and we have sex, I want this, it'd be great. Um, a lot of times a person will be scared, over overwhelmed by it. And um, you can take a possible good candidate, you call it, and, and, and ruin it. Um, the way to look at this is, I always look at this, LaVar, whether it's a, a, a dating question or just a relationship question, there's these two people. So LaVar and we'll call her, we'll call her Beth. And, and two people want to have a relationship. You guys are like two, two uh, mountain peaks. There's the mountain peak over here and that's LaVar and there's a mountain peak over here and that's Beth. And you're interested, you're both interested but you need to build a bridge in between yourself and that's called communication. Well, communication is the truth. You want to, you have a truth question, like what's your preference sexually when, you know, you get married. But there's got to be this bridge and the bridge is, a, is the bridge of trust, how much I trust you. And if you don't know that person very well, first date, second date, that bridge is built out of like thread I mean, you know, it's not like the Golden Gate Bridge. It's only got two dates behind it. It's a very tenuous, fragile trust thing. And then you want to bring the truckload of sex over it. Boom, guess what's going to happen? You know, the truck, you know, breaks through the thread. That's what I thought. And it all blows up. So build that bridge of trust by communication, more time, getting to know each other for these more private sort of um, um, delicate issues. And your timing will be much better. How's that? Uh, good feedback, helpful. Good. And then the issues of, you know, dating costs time and money. And in Mr. C Dr. Cloud's book, he recommends dating five at a time. Actually, I don't know I who. Answer one question at a time. I'm sorry, LaVar, we've, we've done our question. 
we got people in line. I'm sorry. Oh, I, do you, you have to go? I mean, did I, am but, I done? Yeah, but well, you can call I missed that. I, oh, okay. Okay, good luck. Take care. Yeah, I, I don't, gosh, Stacey and I love to talk to y'all, but there's just this, this group of people that have interest and needs, and we kind of feel like that it's not fair to have follow-up questions that somebody has when other people only have one. And so it'll be nice and fair. Right, Stacey? That's right. Hey, now, um, I, I do want to tell you a little bit about what we do. Um, and that's if, if you, if this is sort of your time and you're 2.0 or 1.0 or 3.0 in life and career, and you've been in COVID make you think, like I was talking to a friend the other day, he said, you know, COVID made me slow down and think what's really meaningful in my life instead of doing the hamster thing, just working. So he said, he said, I just pulled back and I realized my job's not great and I want a, a better life and was purpose. You ought to consider getting a degree with us at the, a real good degree, like a master's accredited degree um, at the Townsend Institute for Leadership and Counseling. We are fully accredited with a master's or a credential in organizational leadership master's or credential in executive coaching consulting which is just growing so quickly and a master's or credential in counseling and, and actually you can also now get a phd in counseling we just added a doctoral program got all the blue ribbon um, accreditations and um we've been around enough now that um we're getting field reports from the people our graduates and the bosses are calling us back the supervisors are saying these grads they know what they're doing um they're excellent you know send us more and people are getting a great education. So um, Stacy's throwing on the uh, uh, link to the um, to how you have to meet with us, and we have info sessions and stuff. But at this time, we've got many, many students around the world that are getting great degrees, great jobs, and we'd love to have you. So FYI. Okay, Stacy. Okay, John. Um, we're getting a little bit of feedback from Zoom right now, saying they're having some technical problems with calls. They're working on it. it should be. If you're if callers, if you're trying to call in and you're getting like a busy line, um, continue to try us back. It should be cleared up soon. But until then, um, John, you have a question from um, Penny on Instagram. Penny, and she is um, she had seen your um, connection email as well as the video posting on um, being connected and um, how you talked about that at the beginning of the show and the things to be able to make connection versus judgment with someone. Oh, so her no, question to you no, is- I didn't talk about it at the beginning of this show because we didn't have time, but is that the, the, the video email that came out like earlier today? Correct. That was your topic. I for, connect without judging. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, got yep. it. And she's asking you um, if a person on the autism spectrum can learn this. Um, yes, as far as their- um, as their issue will let them. Um, we know a lot about autism spectrum, those sorts of things that we did not know. And we know that um, there's a neurological, I mean, the brain just isn't work wired the right way to be able to go into really emotionally attuned, vulnerable conversations. And I mean, I've got autistic friends that are just nicest people in the world, but there is that they, 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 while they think very well and they care, autistic uh, people on spectrum care deeply, but it's hard for them to um, empathically feel what we're feeling, not their fault. And so uh, when you say, well, can they learn this piece? Here's what they can learn. Number one, um, they're loving people and they can learn how to love, but you've got to tell them exactly what you, what they, what you need. You know, I need a hug now, or I need you to stand further away, or I need you to ask me how my day was. And they're just wonderful people. Sure. I just, it's like, um, It'd be like, you know, like I love scuba diving. I haven't done it in a long time, but I've always loved it. And it'd be like me being with a trainer who says, go over here, don't go over here. There's a barracuda. And I don't know. So I kind of do whatever the guide says. So they don't do it naturally, but they, they just want to be that way. The other thing is, though, is you've got to kind of um, uh, be really positive about the efforts because they, they, they know that it doesn't work, you know, at some level like it should. And so just help me encourage them and say, um, that was good, that felt good. And, and they wanna go, okay, tell me more about that. And also though, I would always tell, I tell people now there's enough spectrum specialists out there, go get some help, get a few sessions and say, what skills, what practice can I do to make this better? So it, it, it can get better, but remember that the, the disability has not been cured yet. Okay. 
That's a great answer, John. Um, and your next question is going to come from Ben, and he's over on your LinkedIn profile. Okay. And he is um, he is asking how he can heal after there has been fidelity in the marriage. He and his wife. His now, wife there's been fidelity or infidelity? Infidelity, sorry. Um, he's so been married. People don't call me saying I've got fidelity. What do I do? <laughs> right, right. I can't cheat. Teach me how to cheat. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> We don't get that. Okay, so Ben, I'm sorry though. You 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 experienced infidelity. Go ahead and read the rest of the question, Stacy. Yep, married for 15 years, and it has happened twice. Um, once about seven years in, and once about three years ago. Uh, they go through counseling, and things seem to get better for a while, but then the tendencies um, start to creep back up again. And he said, "We are." Um, we are believers and belong to a church, but at this point in my life, I'm feeling like my belief is not helping me and how my heart feels so betrayed. It, it causes me to not want to be close to her anymore. Oh gosh, Ben, my heart just sank. I'm so sorry. I mean, when you, when you love someone that much, especially a spouse, the unfaithfulness, um, it's like it guts you. It's like it takes your insides and shreds them and you don't know up from down. And, and I'm very sorry. So I understand the, why you're concerned. Um, well, the good news is, yeah, you can heal. But the biggest problem, there's one obstacle and then I'll give you sort of a path on this. The biggest obstacle is trying to get your healing from a spouse. So you can only heal to the extent that you have trusting relationships around you, people that you can't trust. And I hope your wife is serious about her healing and you know wants to be better, but she says she still has tendencies to stray. So it's kind of like nice person, but very, very untrustworthy right now. And you can love someone without trusting. I mean, think about God. He loves us, but he knows that we stray. So he's, he doesn't put his self-image needs into us, right? So you would move, you want to care about her and be, you know, be, want her to grow and support her. But in terms of investing your heart, I wouldn't do it till you and the shrink and her see constant change, faithful change. There's a, there's a, a, a word, one of my favorite words in the Bible, it's an Old Testament word, Ben, it's called hesed, H-E-S-E-D. And H and hesed means faithful love. And I love it because it has the two parts of a great relationship. The love part's there which means, you know, you can attune, connect, and you want the person's best. But the, but the faithful part is there too, which is mean you're reliable and you're dependable and you don't lie, cheat, and steal. So one, so you can have people that love you, but they're not very faithful, which is what you've got. And you got people that are faithful, but they're not very loving. We call them rigid OCDs. You don't want that. So keep that in mind that until your wife puts together faithfulness and commits to it over time, not just a, you know, right now, but she's got to prove it every time to you and the shrink. You love her, but you don't want to, her faithfulness is not in place. So it's not time to trust her. It's called a deinvestment from trust. So now what does Ben do with his broken heart? Well, that's why you need a good counselor, a great church, and a good life team. And a life team, you find in my book, People Fuel, I talk about you got to get three to 10 people that know it all about you. They know the good, the bad, and the ugly, and they still love you and accept you. They would never judge you. They'll tell you the truth. They're for you. And those people, along with the counselor and the great church, which is, includes how God leads his people, that will heal you. And, and the first thing you got to bring into that is I am betrayed. I feel unloved i feel unwanted i feel lied to i don't know who i can trust bring all that mess in there and a, and that system i just told you church which is god life team which is these folks and then a good a good therapist they'll help you to rebuild trust confess how bad things are and give you all the time you need to talk about your sadness and lostness and, and even anger and then help you to rebuild trust in the right people and it won't be your wife until she earns it. I'm not judging your wife. People make mistakes, but don't trust a person who is not proved to be trustworthy until they are. I wrote a book called Beyond Boundaries where I talk about when you've had to set boundaries and the person says they've changed, how do you know when it's safe to go back in the water? You might want to check that out. So good luck, Ben.
Okay, John, uh, your next question comes from someone who's watching so, you. Uh, Zoom is just out to lunch now, even now. <laughs> Zoom is doing okay. It's their call-in platform that is um, having some technical difficulties at the moment. All right. So, we'll uh, make it while the sun shines. That's good. Right. Uh, Annie Dean on your Facebook live right now is asking you, she said she has a question. Her question is, how does she lovingly speak truth to someone important to her who is struggling in their marriage when they are related to her? How do I speak truth to someone who, important to me who is struggling in their marriage? Right. And she's related to them. Oh, this, I just wish I could text her and say, okay, I have one more question. I'll do it without the question, but I need a little more information. You can ask a question and I'm oh, watching the feed. So maybe she'll type back. Okay. In the any, any D, all right, if you're hearing this or seeing this, type back why it's hard to do that. Because in, in healthy people, it's a non-issue. So there's some reason you feel, I mean, even if they're important to you, if they're related to you, that's what love and truth and grace are about. So I need to know why you feel not okay about saying the, the truth. What do we do now, Stacey? Just kind of wait for an answer. <laughs> we haven't done this before. <laughs> Let's see if she's uh, answered us back yet. Not just yet, but I think you could probably go ahead and begin with her. Okay. Uh, you know, how, how it is a sticky situation because she's related to the person, but she's close enough with them and cares about them and All their right. struggle. Okay. Well, since you're not sure, like that tells me there's an anxiety about something kind of unsafe. And it could be any number of things. It could be, um, we've never had a serious talk. And if she gets upset with me, it screwed the whole family up because it's ripple effect and all that. It could be that, no, I do know her very well and she triggers all the time on me and she blows it up. It could be that um, uh, she knows that I have issues too and she'll blame me, who knows? There's just this menu. So let me just start with the basic principle. When you're when you're in doubt, Annie, Annie Dean, yeah, Is that right, Stacey? That's correct. When you're in doubt, Annie Dean, do what I always. Oh, do. She's responding to you. Oh, cool. Uh, she says because I'm afraid of their response, maybe anger, and also fear of them blocking me out of their life. Got it. Okay, that was very helpful. All right, um, I'm gonna give you four words and explain them before you go into the. I think you've got some issues that are making your marriage worse. You do the following, P-T-S-F, and I don't mean P-T-S-D. Per permission to speak freely. I got it from my military friends, it's wonderful. You don't go into the issue until you tell, let's call her Jennifer. Um, Jennifer, um, I have something I wanna go over, I'm concerned about, but you know, I don't want to, upset or alienate you so you let me know if it's okay to talk about it because if you're not we'll have a good time and talk about kids and movies and all that now jennifer has a choice jennifer can go yeah it's really bad time right actually and i'd just like you to be nice to me and you go fine or jennifer can say yeah i'm a growth person and i'm feeling kind of resilient i want to hear it and then you have permission and at that point you lovingly say you know i always started off with you've heard if you've heard my stuff you know i always got these two things one is um, I care about you, and that kind of takes care of some of the fears of judgment. We call that the persecutory judge in our head that says, you know, and Dean's mean, mad at me. So you, you do the four things so that makes them feel less persecutory or persecuted. Second thing you do is, by the way, we're related. Anytime I alienate you or bother you or irritate you, I do want to know. So at that time, you've done everything you can do, and she's given you permission and all this to say, okay, here's the issue. I think you're sort of unloving with Sam, or I think that you criticize him too much, or I think you don't take care of yourself, whatever. That's the protocol, and good luck with that. Okay, John, your next question is coming from Tabitha over on your Instagram page. And she says, Dr. Townsend, I've been a follow of your, follower of yours and Henry's for quite some time. I've been through ultimate leadership with growth skills with you and Henry. And I've learned a lot over the last 10 years. However, I have been in a 20 year emotionally abusive marriage. We've raised three kids together who are now 
in college and I am trying to decide whether it is healthy for me to go ahead and exit the marriage now that my kids are older and college age and not in the house all the time because since they left it's just me and him and it is so difficult to bear this without my children being around she's basically saying her kids kept her going yeah yeah very sorry to happen that's feels like a you're a prisoner with somebody who's cool to you now. You're stuck. Kind of captured them. I'm sorry. Um, I would want to ask that second question too, but because you know, my first question would always be, um, what have you done that's failed? Because I don't want to give an answer and then you go, I already tried that. That's not good, you know. But she does say that they have been in counseling on and off. Oh, did, to why know did you do that to me? Sorry. <laughs> read the whole thing. I need the I need the info, Stacy. I need the data. Okay. <laughs> we have been through counseling off and on to no avail. He is still the same person he was two years into marriage when all of this began. Okay. By the way, community, anytime we text oh, you that, that you know Zoom's not working or whatever, um, and you want you got a problem, always put something in there about oh, we've tried this and it's failed. Cause I just hate to be the guy that says, Oh, well. Do this and you go well i did that you wasted my time so just put here i always say failed attempt put your failed attempt in because then we can come up with something new that could work okay um exit well i think that um i can see why i mean you're in pain and you're lonely and it's bad and the kids were sort of your your reason for being around and they were comforting to you um i would try a few things since it's so bad I would go, even though you, 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 I appreciate that you tried it, but I want to say that was a long time ago. I want you to go first, tell them I'm not happy with us and whatever my part is and your part is, it's really bad. And I'm scared and lonely and miserable. And I want us to go to marriage counseling. Now, I'm going to give you the decision tree. Then he goes, sure, maybe he's getting lonely too. So you go there, things get better. Okay. Or he goes, no, I don't want us if I don't believe in it, and it's, you're all the problem, and he gaslights you. Then you say the following. Okay, well, I'm going to go to marital counseling about you and me, and we'll just talk about you and me and come up with strategies how to deal with that, and I'd love for you to come, but if you don't want to, I've got to go to marital counseling even without you. And there's a certain percentage of spouses that will go, wait a minute, you're putting strategies about me, and I'm not even there to kind of be part of that? I'll go. I'll go kicking and screaming but at least they're on the operating table of the therapy. And the therapist can go saying, why wow, you seem like you're kind of tentative about this. All of a sudden the doctor is in there and the patient's on the operating table, which is your whole goal. You can't do this by yourself. There is a percentage of those that go, knock yourself out. I don't care. Go every day if you want to go, but uh, I'm not interested. So I'm, I'm trying to give you the scenarios, not knowing your situation. So you go and the therapist helps you and says, here's the strategy to deal with it. Then what you do is you look, you, you find out, is there, is there a danger? I mean, emotional abuse can be something that's really bad. And in the, you know, this is kind of the decision with your, with your therapist and your, you know, your pastor and people that understand your emotional and spiritually. And they may say, you're in emotional danger. You're being, um, it's literally abused. And in those cases, then you warn and say, I'm getting feedback that this is, that this, this is abuse and that can't be done so i'm gonna to have to warn you there'll be consequences if you continue not being nice to me and they go oh some here's the good and the bad and some mom go yeah okay i don't want you to leave and so yeah and other one go screw it i don't care decision tree again then you go all right so i need you to you know i can't live with you um and you go into what's called a legal not, a, not only legal separation but Sometimes it's just what's called a structured separation. That's not the legal part where you say, I would still like to try the marriage, but you're just wounding me. So I need you to leave or I leave. How you work that out? I have two places. I can't live with you. And then if sometimes, here's the good part. Then the guy goes or the gal goes, I miss you and I miss her. I don't want to grow, but I do miss her. And they have to make a choice. And they go into counseling and all of a sudden the counselors get together and kibitz after a few months and go, let's try it again for six weeks because maybe you won't be beat up. And it's temporary. It's a temporary thing. And then 
he behaves and you behave or she behaves how that works. And you're happy. But if that person says, yeah, go ahead, separate, that's fine, I don't miss you. There are some people that, and I, I think it's nothing wrong with it, that say, I will stay separate from this person, have a full life with great relationships, great friends, things I love to do, um, love being with my kids and visiting, traveling, working, working with ministries and, you know, human trafficking and poverty and all those things. And I have a full life without that. So, but that's sort of how the, the process goes. And I hope that goes well for you. Okay, John, I think you have time for one more question. Um, and this is a really, 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 really complicated one. What are we going to do, Stacey? It won't be a complicated one. This will be very easy for you. So you're, you're kind of curating things to make this work. <laughs> I could give you some complicated ones if you want. There are several yeah, of those ways. Three minutes. No, we don't give you that. <laughs> okay, so, um, John, this comes from another viewer. He says, hi, John, my name is John. He's over on Twitter. And he says, I just was listening to your explanation um, for the previous question. He said, um, I've been in my marriage for 15 years. I'm now the stay at home dad of the last five years while my wife works in corporate. My question to you is about gaslighting. Can you please clarify exactly how to tell that I'm being gaslighted? I have felt it in the past, but am just kind of only the knowledge is that it's my wife trying to talk me out of my experience, but I think that it's a lot more than that. And I'd like to know what the real definition of it is. You know, one of the, great question, John. And um, one of the, it's weird, but there's a really good wiki article on that. So after you get, I give this my spin on it. It's, it's, it's pretty instructive. All right, the gaslighting technically is a lot like what you said. It's when one person wants to invalidate when one person wants to have another person feel like their reality and their perception. I'm trying to do this right because people write these down. And I want to make sure I got it. When one individual attempts to make another person question their perceptions for the purpose of control. Stacey, would you write that down sometime? That might be a book or something. Absolutely. Say it again. When one individual attempts to make another individual doubt their perceptions for the purposes of control. That's kind of what I think. And so having said that, John, um, how do you know? Um, the way you know is several things is um, you have to be very factual first. You know, if they, you know, it can't be well you know, you looked at me funny yesterday. No, I didn't, because that's, he said, she said, it's got to be like factual things about money and time. And so be, start, start, uh, mm, start making your list of how to improve our marriage and, and be sure you knew the date and time of things, because they're going to go, oh, you're overreactive, but you got to say, no, I didn't go above this many decibels. You have to be that way. Secondly is um, let them know, this is on a meta level, this is kind of on a meta level, um, Sharon, I, I feel like whenever I feel like you hurt my feelings, you say I'm making things up, and maybe I am, but not. But every single time, it's always me, because some people that aren't real are not serious. See, there's always if you know the show at all, there's four levels of severity. There's normal, which is not severe at all, doesn't exist. There's mild, moderate, and severe. And if Sharon is normal, well, she's not because she's doing this. She, if she's mild, she'll go. Okay, sometimes it's me. Sometimes it is me, but I am defensive and you work it out. Moderate, severe, say, yeah, 100% of the time it's you. Not a good sign. The next thing is you begin going to other objective people who, are, who love you and love both of you guys and say, I'm trying to be honest about taking the beam out of my ear. Did I overreact? And they might say, well, say it like you said it. And you, if you say, well, yeah, I, I told her, the scrambled eggs are awful. They go, yeah, she's probably right about that. But if you sort of scrambled eggs could be better, then they give you other realities. So I'm, what I'm telling you is go after a, begin to query with her, make sure you're clear about your own feelings and your own re perceptions, go to other people. And the other part is um, look at control. If you find out, that underneath here, you lose control in the marriage, not control of her, but you lose your freedom, 
you lose your choices, you lose your autonomy, that's a sign that you're being gaslighted. And I hope that helps. Great explanation, John. And it looks like we are out of time now. And thank you all for those of you that called in and for those who tried to call in, but you wrote your question since the lines were a little weird today. The tech gremlins were after us. Um, return to us next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be right here again from 2 to 3 Pacific Time. And um, we always make a suppose a couple of days beforehand to remind you, but the number and the meeting room ID is always the same. So if you tried to call in today and couldn't get in, save it and give us a shout back next week. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you being here. See you next week.